Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be upon you, the blessing of Allah and the mercy of Allah. May Allah grant you peace and mercy and, ha and may Allah be merciful to you. We thank you for tuning in to the Words Make People podcast. We know that your time is valuable, so we appreciate you giving us your time. This is part eight of our look at Al-Islam, the un Al Islam, the 144,000, and the transformation of society. As we explained in the previous video, the 144,000 is a symbolic number of those who are steeped in the spiritual sciences. The number 12, Imam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the number 12, Imam Muhammad, excuse me, Imam Muhammad Rayyilahu An said that the number 12 represents those who are established in the spiritual sciences. So the 144,000 selected um, teachers, Dawis, will be steep in in-depth learning, uh, in-depth knowledge of the, of the spiritual sciences. And as we said before, the 144,000 does not necessarily have to be males but can also be females, be male and female. It's about the nature of the of the individual, not their sex. So we're going to continue our reading on page 144. Excuse me. <laughs> on page 56. And the title is one the 144,000. And this is uh, coming from chapter 7, verse 4. 5 to 17 of the book of Revelations. And this, this is a comparative religious class also. Reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 5 to 17. It reads, From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of God. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. Verse 9, after this I looked, and there were before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they, cry, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and four living creatures they fell on their faces before the throne and worship Allah, worship God, saying, Amin, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever, forever and ever. Amin. Then one of the elders asked me, those in white robes, who are they and who were they and where did they come from? I answered, so you know, and he said, these are the, they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits in the th on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 5 to 17. We want to make a make quick clarification on some um, terms. The term lamb is uh, symbolically uh, is a symbol, symbolic a uh, parable. The lamb, the lamb is talking about the nature of that of that individual. We believe that in, that individual is to to be the Mahdi. So the Mahdi will have the disposition of the lamb come from, he will come from uh, people who were persecuted. So his disposition will be down of the lamb, meaning he, 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 he will be in accord with his original nature. Also, the blood of the lamb represents the life, blood represents the life force. So... So the lamb represents a type of a leader, a type of a leader that is in the nature and the fithra who has the Christ nature. He is, he is a type of the Christ. The Christ nature. And in this case, is my belief, as it says in, in 14, uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, I answered, Sir, you know, and he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. The great tribulation, in my humble opinion, is the situation or the condition that the African American people or the Bilalians had to come through. No other people has the history of uh, tribulation of the Bilalian or African American people. So we had to, uh, God brought us out of that tribulation and he blessed us. He blessed the, 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 the lamb of the Messiah and Mahdi to come up out of a people who were crucified, who were uh, demonized, who were stripped of their uh, humanity, and who had to come back into him, who had to be brought back into humanity. And that began with the teaching of W. D. Fahd Muhammad and continued with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Deputy Paul Muhammad introduced a re-education process for the African American people, for those who accepted Islam under his peculiar um, teachings. But those teachings were geared to develop Muslims who would be disciplined, who would be focused on Dawah, who would be focused on the concept of remaking the world using Al Islam as a social justice instrument, not just as a religious instrument. So the Lamb here is the Mahdi, he is a representative of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The blood, as we said, represents the life. So they have been washed, they have washed their robes and made them white, pure, in the life of the Lamb, in the life of the Prophet Muhammad because the Lamb is the representative of the Prophet, as Matthew the type of the Prophet Muhammad. He comes to represent, he comes as a letter, as a letter they represent of the Prophet. His mission is in the mission of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Therefore they are before the throne of Allah, and serve him day and night in his temple. And this, in Allah's temple, Allah says in the Quran that the master, the earth is Allah's master. So we are obligated to build, to build massages all around the world. Houses of worship dedicated for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never again will they hunger 
Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water, which is war represents spirituality, religion, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So these are the 144,000, the ones who have been, who come up out of the body. There are more than, the 144,000 is just represented of a group within a group. And they have been blessed with the knowledge of the spiritual sciences. Because the 12 represents the spiritual sciences. And so they are, they are a type of those 12 tribes of Judah. So that's, now let's move on. So as we mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, the above verses are describing the sitting up of 144,000 selected teachers or students who will be protected and sheltered by the Lamb, the Majestic Mahdi, in the latter days. The 144,000 are not being taken from the literal 12 tribes of Israel, but will have the nature of those tribes. As it says in verse 9, of uh, uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 states, After this I looked, and there were before me a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they, are wearing, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. In the quote. That's chapter 7, that's uh, verse 9. So the Followers of the Majestic Mahdi of the Lamb will come from all over the Muslim world. So we have the job of taking out of Islam to the deepest recesses of the world. This verse specifically lets us know that the followers of the Manifest Imam will come from every nation, tribe, people, and language. They like the followers of Prophet Muhammad, who is the leader of the Manifest Imam, and all the Muslims of the world. So the manifest imam, his leader, is Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He is not his own leader. He follows the prophet, so on and so on. Al-Islam is a universal religion that covers the whole globe. It is not confined to one country or region. The 144,000 will come from all quarters of the world. The white rose are symbolic of clean character and of pure nature, as well as representative of the of the thobe of the jalabiya worn by many Muslim males and, and Muslim women. Now let's move to chapter seven, verses eleven to seventeen. We're gonna look at specifically look at verse eleven to seventeen. One one more time. Verse 11, all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders of the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. Number 12, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. 13. And one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they, and where did they come from? 14. I answered, Sir, you know, and he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 15. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. 16. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat them down, nor any scorching heat. 17. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be the shepherd, will be their shepherd. And he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's verse 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 11 to 17, once again. So verse 11 through 17 further identifies. The 144,000 as Muslims because only Muslims are obligated by faith to make such a prostration when they worship God, the highest and most praiseworthy. Muslims are obligated to pray at least five times per day, and it's possible that prayer should be offered in the mosque, masjid, 
They won't thirst or hunger because of the discipline home during Ramadan. Now, chapter 7, we'll read it. Um, so, now, now we're going to look at the 313. The 313, among the 144,000, there will be an even higher group of 313 students. In the 12th of Shia Islamic mythicism, 313 is the number of soldiers in the army of the 12th of the hidden Imam, the Mahdi. I am of the opinion that 313 represent the 313 highest students of Imam Dervidin Muhammad. Now, and I'm also of the opinion that the 12th, the hidden Imam that the 12th of the shields are looking for is no longer hidden. We believe that the that the Imam, that the Imam of this age is is as we said, the manifested Imam, so he is manifested clear. He's no longer hidden. The information that he that is being put out is no longer hidden. This is information that is for the whole world, for every human being, is to know the knowledge, the true meaning of Quran, understanding the symbolism in the Quran, and know that there's a higher reading of the Quran. So the manifest Imam comes with that. And the students of the manifest Imam, it's our job to take that forward. Now so, the war against the Jacobite, the Dajjal Antichrist, was a war that's being fought on the spiritual and the intellectual realm. It will not be a physical conflict, for the most part. So, so what we, we are fighting the, the, the false information, the lies of the Dajjal. The Dajjal, the Dajjal is the author of lies, falsehood, misinformation. The Dajjal is a liar. This whole thing is based on lies. The weapon used by the 313 will be the Holy Quran, the Hadith, and the language and commentary of the Majadid Mahdi. Every prophet that came had an inner circle of students or companions beyond the general community of believers. Prophet Messiah Isa, Jesus, is known for having 12 students of disciples, but I'm sure he had more followers than just those 12. Prophet Muhammad had a massive number of followers, but only a small number were a part of the inner circle and still his closest companions. Now we'll look at the Holy Quran, chapter 32, verse 24, from the, looking at the Abdullah, Abdullah Yusuf Ali translation. Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةٌ يَادُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبُورُوا وَكَانُوا بِأَيَّتِنَا يُكِّنُونَ Translated, Yusuf Ali translated as, We have appointed from among them leaders. And that word, Ayama, means leaders. I actually saying imams, not just leaders. I, 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 I am a, giving guidance under our command so long as they preserve with patience and continue to have faith in our signs. Abu Abba Abeda al Hizza said, and I quote, I asked Abu Jaffa, he was a noble, about the matter. When would it appear? He said, if you, ex if you expect it to happen a certain way, but it comes to you in a different way, do not deny it. This is Al, al Muslim, Al, from the book Al Muslim Al Mawduri, Mal and it's on page 767. Also, in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, said, quote, Al Islam, Islam began as something strange and will revert to being strange as it began. This is from Mirza Nuri Mustakrak El Wasl, page 11, uh, part 11, page 323. 
And the above reports will warn that the return of the Mahdi may not be what the people during the time of Prophet Muhammad people be, be upon him and his companions and family perceive it would be. The Mahdi will not ride horses or use a physical sword as it will be as S. Abdul Ali Maududi said, he was a noble, um, pardon me, May the mercy of Allah be upon him. He said, among the most he will, he said that the Mahdi will be one among the most modern of moderns, the most modern of leaders. Quote, this is a quote from Abdul Ali Maul Mao Duty. He says, and I quote, and, and he says, and I read, and, and I quote, he will be the most modern leader of his age. Possessing an, an unusually deep insight in all the major problems of life. End of quote. S. Abdul Ali Maudud in his book, The Revivalist Movement in Islam, lists 14 attributes concerning the ideal of Majahdi. The ideal of Majahdi qualities and qualifications according to Maudud are number one, the spirit becomes very close to prophethood. Two, he is characterized by a clear mind. Three, he has penetrating vision. Four, he has unbiased straight thinking. Five, a special ability to see the right path clear of all extremes and keep balance. Number six, the power to think independently of the contemporary and centuries old social and other prejudices. Seven, encouraged to fight against the evils of the time. Eight, inherent ability to lead and guide. Number nine, Unused the competence to undertake ishtihad in the work of reconstruction. Number 10, he must have a thorough and comprehensive grasp of al-Islam. And number 11, must be a perfect Muslim in thought and attitude. Number 12, must have the akamun, the akamun to distinguish al-Islam from un-Islam in the finest details. Must possess the ability to extract the truth from the weather of long-established falsehood. And then, like I said, this is taken from the Revivalist Movement in Islam by S. Abdul Ali Maududi, one, one of the great scholars of, of the past century. Maududi in his book, The Revivalist Movement in Islam, also lists 10 attributes concerning the Mahdi. And the al Mahdi, al Imam al Mahdi attributes according to Mao Duty. Number one, he will be the most modern leader of his age, possessing unusual deep insight all the major problems of life. As regards to statesmanship, political secrecy, and strategic skill in war, he will, he will take the whole world by surprise and prove himself to be the most modern of all the models. His bodily features will not be any different than the common man to render him easily recognizable. He will not proclaim himself to be the Mahdi. The Mahdi, like any other revolutionary leader, will have to struggle hard and encounter all the obstacles coming in his way. He will create a new school of thought on the basis of pure Islam, change mental attitudes of the people, and initiate a strong movement which will at once be cultural and political. He will establish a powerful Islamic state the Islamic State will, will, engin, will engender and forth the real Islamic spirit in all his affairs and will provide an extraordinary emphasis to scientific development and progress. 11. As indicated in the tradition, it will please those who belong to the heavens and also those who belong to the earth. The heavens will generously shower their blessings on the, and the earth will diverge all his treasures. This is taken from the Robert Movement of Islam by S. Abdul Ali Maududi. That's it. that's a Mao 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 Duty's um, understanding of what the what the uh, Imam Al Mahdi will be about. <clears throat> so that's one take on the Mahdi. Every Mujahid is assigned a task according to the needs of his age. He he is commissioned the Mujahid of his, of this age to show. I'm sorry, let me, let me um, <clears throat> repeat that. 
Every magistrate is assigned a task according to the needs of his age. He commit, Allah commissioned the majority of this age to show to the world the face of Islam in, in its full splendor. Thus, the, the Mujahidun has repeatedly emphasized in his writings and speeches from the beginning and right up to the present that the real object of his advent is the propagation of Islam and the exaltation of the word of Allah, the word of God. Rauf M. Abdullah, from facilitator for the students of Imam W. Muhammad made these comments concerning Christ and the Ma Christ of Muhammad on September 14, 2008. He states, and I quote, Jesus did not come to establish community life. He came to address individual redemption. Remember, Jesus left no community. He prayed for the comforter to come and establish the community. While Muhammad, peace, peace be upon him, came to establish community life. Prophet Muhammad said that in the end, he and Jesus would be seen together. This our positive refers to many things. One application is that the Mahdi will come, the Mahdi will address both individual redemption and community establishment. It also means that the Mahdi will re reconcile the role of Jesus and the role of Muhammad. Both of these missions were accomplished by Imam Wazadim Muhammad, Rahim al Imam Debdin Muhammad. Now we move to a sub-chapter in the book on page 60, The Model Community. What is community? Marion's Webster Dictionary defines community as a unified body of individuals such as people with common interests living in, living in an area. A group of people with a common characteristic of interest living together with a larger society. My mom had made the following comments regarding, the, regarding community in a public address in Poughkeepsie, New York on December 29, 1991. And I quote from this lecture, Imam Muhammad says, and I quote, For us, a well-balanced community is a midway community. And that word is not sufficient, but it is the best word that I have right now in English. Midway suggests that it is not a community of the extremes. It is not a community of the extreme right and it is not a community of the extreme left. I'm going to address the steps of success within, the, within, within this theme of well-balanced community. The word is al wusta The context where this word is given, both the community and the middle prayer are identified by this term. We are to be a community of El Wusta. And we are and we are also told to guard a certain prayer. That prayer is called Salatul Wusta. It is the middle prayer. Most scholars, if I'm remembering correctly, do not identify Salatul Wusta as that prayer, but they say it is Asa. Asa implies difficulty. Why are we cautioned to not neglect that prayer? The midday in the society of Muhammad was a time when they took a break from work. So they are free from work at midday. The Friday prayer is the time of Salah al It replaces Salah al -Zuhr. If we miss the Friday prayer, we have to do the four rakats instead of the two rakats for the Jummah. Also, in the very name itself implies a difficulty. Allah says, Hold the Quran, surely with difficulty there is ease. The juice out of the fruit is called asir. That means it was gotten by pressure. You squeeze the orange and mash the fruit. And there's a saying, quote, he will tread the prime, he will tread the wine press alone, end of quote. Also is a time of difficulty. It's a time of difficulty for what? It is difficulty for man and society. The, the historical society of for the developing life of man. This is not a time in one day as much as it is a time in the life of man. It's a time when he will face great difficulty and his life will be pressed. And if he is to get anything to quench his thirst, he will have the press to get a little asylum. We are supposed to be the midway community. Now the time for difficulty is the time when people are given to go to extremes. So we are to guard against extremes. 
Call the mind to have emphasis in the Quran for a stay out of the forbidden extremes. When we say we want a well-balanced community, we are saying that we want a community avoiding those forbidden extremes. This concern, first of all, the extreme that we see in the life of society that brings society to die, to fall to its end. So this concern is first of all the extreme that we see in the life of society that brings the society to die, to fall to its end. The history of the rise and fall of enlightened civilized society captures man's obsessions with his destiny and origin. These are extremes too. If I say left and right, you may take the turn politically. But the extreme too is when man becomes obsessed with an idea of his origin and destiny. This obsession captured in history provides this obsession captured in history provides a focus for viewing society's classical rise and fall. Hence, man's faith in society, man's faith in society's faith, most often tied to are uh, uh, most often tied to that obsession. Therefore, a midway community and people are to be understood as a community neither given to fatalism or to romanticism. Romanticism brings to mind what we have come to see today in these times as humanism. That, roman that romanticism of the past is related to the humanism that we have presently. That we have presently. Humanism is a child of that old idea. We are not to become so humanly tender a sentimental that we are identified with humanism. I know this is difficult for us, but this strong souls is what Allah wants. Allah wants us to measure up to the difficult task. If we do not measure up to the difficult task, we cannot sustain this great life. The difficult task is to be, the difficult task is to check our tendency to be too sweet, too mellow, too soft, too ripe. Some will say, Brother Imam, as bad as we are, you don't need to give us a caution like that. I think most of you are as bad as you are because you are too ripe, too tender, and too sweet. Too sweet. We may say the extreme is the East and the West, symbolically speaking. For we know that Allah said in this light, He says, and I quote, is neither, He said that this light, is neither of the east or the west, but is of a blessed tree, neither east or west. So east and west are given as two extremes to avoid. I'm focusing upon the tendency of man to be possessed with his origin and his end, his birth and his death. In the quote. Now I look at quote Imam Muhammad made uh, in February, uh, on February the fifth, two thousand two, and this address was given at Duke University and is entitled. Islam wants the individual and the community to have peace in the soul and peace established in the community. Imam this address stated the following, and I quote, We are more aware of ourselves that the Ummah, our community, are in the body of people following our Prophet Muhammad and the book that he received from God to all of us, the Quran. And it is very important that we do understand that Muslims are a community and that Islam is a message from God to the people of the world. Not just to Arabs or Africans, but to all the people of the world to guide us to the best model of, of community life. Hum the Prophet, peace, peace be upon him, was preaching the religion and giving the Quran as he received it over a period of 20 or more years. However, during the first 10 or 11 years, he was in Mecca and the religion was not established yet. It was just being taught. When he was given the invitation to leave Hafsa Mecca and the Mecca of that time to go to Medina and he finally did arrive in Medina and then began to establish the religion as the religion of not only the human heart but the religion of the human community. So we're going to stop there. We'll pick up um, with the rest of it um, in our next um, podcast. So we act the Allah, bless you, all of you who are listening, bless you to engulf yourself in the message about Islam. 
the language of the, uh, the Quran, the life of the prophet, and understand that the, we're living in the time of the fulfillment of the, of the book of Revelation and the prophetic hadith for the prophet. So until next time, peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.